go, man. <laughs> hey. hey, I am now on the line with a Mr. Claudio. Wait, hold on. How do I say it Amen. again? Asdo Momento. Is that how you say it? Yes, that's you. That's how you say it in Portuguese, man. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, big bro. Uh, Claudio, you were born in Mozambique, and you are what we would call an all-around dancer, very talented. Thank you, man. Yes, I, I like to do everything. Uh, I'm passionate with dance. I like dance, so yeah, man. Hey, okay, okay, big bro. That's awesome, man. Let me ask you this, Claudio, man. I have never had the opportunity to visit Mozambique, man, so please tell me, you know, what was it like growing up in Mozambique? And uh, I can say that um, I am proudly Mozambican because this is a country in which I have too many good things. Um, the culture, um, the, 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 the sea, the, man, everything here is nice, everything is good. And uh, it's like a country that is on on the way to get more involved. So there is many things that you can come and see, you can come and enjoy here in Mozambique. So yeah, man. That's awesome, man. What was, um, what was your childhood like growing up there, man? Uh, sorry? I said, what was your childhood like growing up in Mozambique? Um, um, man, in my childhood, I had the ability or I had the, Capacity to do many things, man. Uh, like play a football, dance, um, play a PlayStation also, man. Listening to music, everything was like, yeah. Everything that, that you do or that you did on your childhood, I was able to do it. <laughs> no, I yeah, understand man. that, man. I definitely understand that. I'm curious, man. Well, um, what what did your parents do? Let me ask you that. Why? What? What did my parents? Uh, you know, what, what was their do? job? What job did they have? Oh, okay. Um, my father was a biologist. He was a teacher on uh, on some of the universities here in Mozambique. And by the time I was like three or four years old, uh, we were moved to China in which uh, my father was also giving lessons and then finished the master degree on biology. And my mother was uh, working on the bank. Yeah. Yeah. So so you said when you were three, you moved to China? Yeah, I moved to China, yes. And how long were you in China? I lived there for three years. So do you remember or not really? I remember most of the things. I just don't remember how to talk Mandarin, like, yeah, Chinese and stuff. I just remember, like, how to greet and stuff, but uh, I forgot many things. But I know what happened over there. And I remember that we came back to Mozambique because my mother was about to have her third child, my younger brother. So on that time in China, uh, people were, were were, like, only allowed to have two kids. And then we had, we, my mother was about to have the third one. So we had to like run back to Mozambique and my father already finished on that time. So it was like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's, that's actually very cool, man. So, so your father gets his PhD. I think you said um, in China, your mother yeah. has her third child, your younger brother. And so you come back yeah. to Mozambique. And so I guess what you're around six or seven years of age at that time. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. And so I guess, you know, tell me this, man. Um, let me, I'm very curious to hear from you, man. What, yes. what was some of the music that you heard in your household, in your city? Yeah. You know, what was some popular music in, uh, in Mozambique at that time? The popular music in Mozambique at that time, um, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna or I'm gonna talk about um, the type of music that we do it here. That on that time was the one that it was like the most listened and stuff. But um, I would not forget the international influence. I'm talking about kizomba. I'm talking about other types of music. But the one that made me feel like, though, 
yeah, this is my thing, and then I need to dance, I need to to I need to make an interpretation of what I'm listening is panza. We call it panza. It's a local style of music. How do you, how do you spell that? I'm sorry, how do you spell that? P-A-N-Z-A? P N sorry, P-A-N-D-Z-A. Panza. It's like panda, but with a Z in between D and A. <laughs> so yeah, that's a that's a kind of style that is it was like uh, created locally. And then on that time, I think it was on uh, maybe 2K7, yeah, 2K7, 2K, yeah, in between 2K4 to 2K7, it was like boom, 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 all of the stuff, all, all of the clubs, all of the parties, you would listen to this and you'll be like shaking. So, yeah. Okay. So, so tell me, man, tell me, um. Who were some popular Panza musicians? Who made some, you know, absolute bangers? Um, you might have heard. If you listen to 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 Kizomba and stuff, um, because the Panza, it's a style of music or a style of, of music that it's quite similar as Tarashinya. Is quite similar because you have the same beating and uh, the same stops and stuff. So um, the the banger it was on that time was um, actually it was like two guys. It was like a duet of Panda. We call it Zico. Sometimes you say ZK. It's like Z I uh, Q O. And the other one is Danny OG. Yeah. These two guys were the guys that were like making it like, yeah, very, 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 very insane music in Mozambique. Okay. And so, and so if you say it's like Tarashinya, is Panza something that, that they were doing at the club? Or like, could you do this at a family function as well? Could you dance to it? Everywhere, man. Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. You know that um, you know that music. I don't know if you listen to some Kizomba musics. If you see, if you watch uh, Felicia, Rosa, and Isabel. Yeah, I've had, uh, I've had Felicia on my show. Yes, I um, them. There, was, there was a show where they were dancing in Mozambican music. Um, um, that music. Uh, it was made it was made recently i think five years ago or six years ago so um, i'm forgetting the name of the music but they dance and if if you listen to it you will see that it's quite the same as as as, as tarashinya so everywhere you will find it on kizomba socials on party on party on family parties on the club everywhere man everywhere Okay, okay, that's awesome, Victor. That's awesome, man. So, so you're growing up, you know, came back to Mozambique. You guys are loving the pans of music, man. Um, yeah, I guess you know when. Or let me ask you this: is is uh, is dancing a part of the culture in Mozambique? Yes, definitely, man. Definitely. Unfortunately, um, here in Mozambique, uh, we don't have. Uh, a developed market in which the dancers can live through dancing. You know, um, I think we are still here in Mozambique. We are still like this country is still trying to get more developed and make sure that everyone has like every dancer has like uh, the opportunity to live on what they do. You know, but. Um, um, yeah, um, what can I say? So here, um, uh, how can I say? We don't have that, that market, as I was saying. We don't have that market of living through dancing. But, you know, uh, 
I got lost. I got lost. I got lost on my thoughts. I got lost on my thoughts. Not the words. Ah. I think. I think what you're trying to say <laughs> is that you know, uh, you can't. You can't make dancing. You know, your full time job. Is that what you mean, though? Yes. Okay, yes, I understand. Yes. Well, I understand. I definitely understand it. And you but, were saying but though, it, but it's, but it's, but it's, 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 it's. Even though we don't have that capacity of living through dance, but uh, dance is something that has always uh, been a part of like Mozambique and stuff because we have many styles of dances. You see, from the north, north, um, south. Um, center, we have like many types of dances, so we have like many artists. Most of them don't have the capacity to be viewed, but they are like amazing dancers. So, yes, uh, dance is part of Mozambique, and it's something that is like at sometimes you can say this is this is a Mozambican dancer. Like it's very good how the way how we dance and the way people show heart on dancing. That's part of us. Okay. That's awesome, big bro. Let yeah. me ask you this, but I'm curious to hear from you. Um you said you're 25 years old right now, is that correct? Yes, I'm 25. Um, tell me, tell me this, man. How how has Mozambique changed from when yeah. you were, you know, a child? to, you know, what it yeah. is now in 2022. What changes have you noticed for better or for worse? You know, what things have you noticed? The changes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I was, one of the changes that I said that it was like the one that most impacted in Mozambique is the social media or social networks and stuff. Because um, we didn't have much, for example, in the world of dance, we didn't have much, um, artists going to the to other countries to present something from their local country or to make an, a performance and stuff. But now because of social media, we have the ability to put our stuff on the social media and people are able to see and people are able to invite, people are, even, are able to enjoy what we have over here. So this is one of the things. And for example, um, uh, with the arriving of social media, people are able to make like online stores. Here in Mozambique, we have like, we had like too many online stores coming on um, because of social media facilities. And um, we can say this, I'm talking about one of the, the, the things that impacted or the changed way of living from here. Um, since my childhood, uh, man, I think, I think, um, I'm going to talk about me actually, my experience and stuff. Um, I had the opportunity to live a bit of like 1990, 19, and then start living the 20s. Um, and it was good because I was able to see a bit of the old habits and then I was, uh, I was able to know the new habits, the new way of living and yeah, man, many things changed. Most of them I can, I might not like remember at this right moment. I think social media is something that made the most big like impact because now you you can make a baby and the baby now is going to like be born intelligent already you know <laughs> so things you know things things i think i understand you i think i understand you big bro um so let me ask you this man so you are you're growing up in mozambique and everything man um i guess when when do you start to get into dancing and, and how, uh, well, no. how are you introduced to it? Um, I think by the time, um, by the time I, um, I had the ability to listen to music and then follow, like making some moves, some moves that you, you know, those child moves. Um, I was able to to start dancing when I was eight, 
and it was like I had a presentation. Um, I was having lessons, dance lessons. And uh, I had to do like many dances. I was like, I had, we had like big couples and I was like the small couple. I had one girl that was, like, we were like the small couple of the crew. And that was where I started to dance. And my father's, my uncles were like, man, you have a talent. You should like follow that. And I was like, okay, okay. I was a kid. I didn't knew what is to have a talent or something. I was like, no, I'm going to dance. So I started dancing and I started dancing when I was eight and I had like, too many different styles of dancing. I on that on that age, I was able to learn tango, um, valsa, uh, kizomba a bit, but I, I learned and I didn't follow. You know, I didn't make the follow up of these styles um, and the Afrobeat and some of the traditionals some of the north dances and the center dancers so yeah okay yeah. i understand so so you pick up dancing you start dancing you fall in love with it um and i and so i guess tell me this man you know what uh what at that time between eight and you know, 17, 18 years old, you know, what is your favorite dance style? What do you enjoy doing the most? What, 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 fav the favorite dance? Yeah. Afrobeat, man. Okay. Afrobeat. <laughs> Afrobeat. And, 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 and can you put into words, you know, why is Afrobeat your favorite? Can you put that in words? Uh, in, on everything of, of life, most of us burn, uh, get birth with like many capacities, but it, but there's always that one capacity that just say no, this I have to go further. Because um, how can I say the thing that made me like continue with Afrobeat is because um, when I, uh, after okay, let let us say on my twelve, yeah, when I was twelve or fourteen, I made part of the guru that 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 crew were able to make like um, how can i say our our main dance was afrobeat and we were actually making some mood musics of like our own musics to perform with our own musics and yeah so on that time or by that time i started dancing afrobeat like more often and then that thing was becoming to be part of me, like listening to Afrobeat and then trying to move and stuff and then bringing all the, the stuff. So yeah, Afrobeat is like, it, it was the most, it was the most, it was the dance style that I was like more identified to. Even though I don't feel like I have to stick to Afrobeat only. I feel like I have do i feel like i have to learn as much on dance so yeah okay i understand i think i got you big bro so tell me this man i'm curious uh how old, how old were you when you started dancing keys on bro um, I, I guess for the second time so not the I first time seven, when you picked it up again the first time when i was eight yeah yeah um when i was 18 when i was 18 when I was 18. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. And so tell me this, man. Um, is are there any skills or traits that you learn in Afrobeat that you're yeah. able to translate to Kizamba? Yes, man. <laughs> I feel like you I feel like you got me a bit because. Um, one of the one of my um, one of my my thoughts is try to turn um, try to to create things and what I do I I want to learn as much 
to be able to create something that is like different from like basics of Kizomba and stuff. You grab a thing, you grab a move of, 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 of Afrobeat and then you put it on Kizomba, you know, you transform that Afrobeat move on Kizomba and then you make it something. And I made, I actually made one. I have a video on Facebook that I, that I made with my Kizomba partner. And then we were dancing Kizomba on Panza and then making Panza moves on Kizomba. So for me, it's like, I want to learn more so that I can be able to do more. So I create something, I take something from a, a one dance style and then I put it on another one and then it becomes one. So I, th I think I, I can send you that video and you can also see what I made there. It was like hey. an awesome thing, yeah. No, nah, yeah, definitely, so, man, definitely. Send it to me. Yeah, bro, I will send it to you, bro. No, no worries, no worries. So yeah, the thing is, I, I was, uh, uh, I made it even on, on Kizomba. I have uh, some basic sense of 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 a uh, um, basic sense of salsa. I added some salsa moves on Kizomba. Unfortunately, I didn't had uh, I didn't had a video of that. But I think I will I will for I will like. I would be looking forward to organize some videos and stuff, some new new stuff to put it on my social media, share with you guys. Okay, that's awesome, man. That's awesome, man. I'm, I'm curious, man. Tell me this. Um, I asked a two part question. First off, who who was your, you know, when you were 18, who was your <laughs> Kizomba teacher at that time? Okay, my Kizomba teacher at that time. Um, I had plenty of them. Uh, why I say I had plenty of them? Because um, I have a different way of thinking that it's like, it's not like many of other persons don't have. It's like the more information I get in, from different persons, it's better because you're able to collect from here, from here, from here, from here, from here, and then make your own thing. So I had Picardo, Picardo, um, Eugenia Piao. She's a Portuguese female and a Kizomba teacher also, who lives here in Mozambique. I had um, uh, teacher Luis. And then I had uh, uh, um, also, uh, I had some of the friends teaching me some. And I had the one that is like one of the biggest choreographers here in Mozambique. It was the one who worked with me when I was eight. And then we like, we, we meet again. And um, his name is Celso. So I had like plenty of persons who came to put something on my head and I was like, yeah, this I need to, you know. Okay, so I get Picardo, you. Now. Eugenia, um, teacher Luis, Celso, and some of the friends that were like also on the Kizomba community. Okay, that's awesome, man. I'm curious, man. Tell me, how popular is Kizomba in uh, Mozambique? Sorry? I said, how popular is Kizomba in Mozambique? Ah, oh, how's Kizomba in Mozambique? Um, Kizomba in Mozambique is amazing, it's great. As I said to you, we have like many, many, plenty of Kizomba dancers that are very, very, very good. But unfortunately, they don't, they're not on the social media. And I think that we should like, I should, or we Mozambicans should bring more of them. And uh, we have a, it's like, it's not a big community, but it's a small community, but it's a healthy, healthy community, like way too good community of Kizomba over here. And, and so it's also tell me about, um, you know, tell me about maybe like salsa and bachata. Are they, is, is there a big social dancing scene in uh, Mozambique? 
we don't have a, we don't have plenty of them but the ones that had the sense of salsa and bachata they're like insane you see insane we can say we can say we have like five teachers five teachers that are like insane in salsa and bachata when you see them then you say like nigga what is this guy doing like damn <laughs> you see so yeah we don't have it's not a big how can i say the kizomba community is also the same as bachata and kizomba uh, bachata and salsa uh, we all have a sense uh, a small sense of basic sense of kizomba and bachata we dance but the tough ones we can say we have like five of them and, and so and, and so who are they who are the the tough ones who, who are they Sorry? i said who are the tough teachers who are they um Celso is one of the the, the guys that i mentioned before a few minutes before um uh, Eduardo Matop um, um the other one Sergio um the, the other one is the the body lead teacher his name is Nelson and um we had the one called JP and uh, yeah and the other one for for tango we have like friage his name is friage and we have another one uh full jensio so yeah we can say in salsa bachata we have five and then tango we have like two of them not forgetting her their they their, their partners also yeah okay i understand that man okay so um so going back to you know when you're 18 years old and you're learning key zamba man tell me about yeah. Tell me about your beginner stage in Kizamba. What was that like for you trying to learn to dance? Yay! It was difficult. I won't lie to you, man. <laughs> for me to get on the stage where I am, I had the, I had the, um, the, how can I say? I was able to quit from dancing Kizamba. Then I was like, I'm going to quit this because I don't know. And then I stood the time without dancing kizomba but when i came back i said no i have to you know why because um when i was dancing i was getting only the foot steps i was not able to 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 put in my mind that the foot steps come after what you do with your frame come after the lead you know and i wasn't able to lead i was just doing like foot steps and then there was one girl that I danced with her. Actually, she was the one who said, who made me like quit because she was like my first experience on like matching with someone. And I was like doing only footsteps and she was like not understanding. And then because I was not understanding, because she was not understanding the lead, she was like, laughing a bit and I was like shaking I was like damn and she was like good boy you're shaking and I was like yeah I'm shaking and then I, I went out of that dance I said no I'm going away I'm going to stop Kizomba but when I got back I said I'm gonna make this girl regret laughing on me <laughs> so on that time that I quit that I quit it um i was like seeing something that that is the part that my friends came in a bit teaching me some basic uh, uh senses of kizomba and then when i came back the girl was the one who shaved <laughs> because i was i was like stronger and then yeah it was it was yeah it was that was my story on beginning uh, on beginners and so I guess let me ask you this then, man. Um, you said that you were struggling with your frame. Um, I imagine there may be other dancers out there who may be as well who struggle with their frame. So one, one, can you tell me, you know, what do you mean? One, can you tell me what you mean by frame? What do you mean by that in Kizomba? And two, 
Can you give me any advice on improving your frame as a leader? Okay. Um, when I talk about frame, um, frame is actually something that it's the one that we use to make the girl uh, connect with us. Uh, when I teach Kizomba, I have a, a, a um, uh, how can I say? A word that I always say to them. On Kizomba, we men are able to make the girl feel like a mirror, okay? She look us as a mirror, and then she's, she has to be able to follow what we do. She has to do quite the same as what we do. So um, that's why in, 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 a, in a pair dance, we say, when the lady fail, the man is the one who caused that, that fail. So frame, I say, when I say frame, it's like, it's the, 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 the what can I say? The closed position or the position of the pair dance or kizomba dance. So when you do a move, like for example, this move that I did, the lady has to be able to follow. So this is what is going to make the lady understand what I want her to do. Because after, uh, or after me thinking on the dance, thinking on the move that I want to do, I have to be able to show her what I want to do. And I'm not going to whisper on her, on her, on her um, ear. I'm going to make her feel what I want. That's what I call the frame. And as an advice um, for Kizomba, first, first of all, listen to what you dance. Listen to what you're dancing. Musicality is important. Second, don't break the frame. Never break the frame. The, you know what's the frame? It's like, um, for example, um, on my lessons or when I was learning, my teacher on that time was Eugenia and Picardo. They were a pair. Um, what I learned with them, it's like, I can't even dance. With, I'm going to say, imagine this is me and this is my partner, my dance partner at that moment. If I do a move like this, the lady has to follow me, you see, in order to keep our shoulders always parallel, you know. So if I do some, a move like this, she has to be able to understand. Even if we're like close or we are like a uh, 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 distance from each other. If I do a move, she has to be able to understand or to follow the move that I want. Or coming or going or, yeah, I don't know if you understand me. So um, frame is the most important thing for you to keep. It's like on salsa bachata, the frame that we use, it's our hands. It's more loose than kizomba. In kizomba, the frame is like, it's like something that you cannot move because if you, if you let your hands loose, the lady won't understand what you want. You see? Yeah. That's the tip. That. Yeah, okay, I understand that, man. Um... <laughs> That's something that I definitely, when I first started dancing Kizomba, the frame is something that I definitely struggled with, man. Let me let me ask you a follow-up question then. Um, what, or actually, you know, how, what advice do you, yep. ha do you have for followers on, you know, maybe, on maybe how to improve the connection with their partner? You know, what advice do you have for followers? Um, this is something that I used to to teach my followers, my, my followers, because when I when I don't have the, the um, when I don't have my dance partner to teach with me, I have to turn into a, a follower in order to teach the followers or to follow. One of the things that they must do is stop thinking, forget what you've learned on the lessons. Because the guy that you're finding on the social or your partner on the social, it wasn't on the same lesson as you. And he has like other ways of thinking. And if you think on what you learned, you won't be able to connect. The, the follower has to block her thinking, her way of power, her thoughts, and then just 
follow what the partner wants. And, and because that's a thing that makes the ladies go automatic. When they go automatic, I won't be able to, 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 to lead a woman. It's like you have, uh, you're addicted to, you're addicted to, to, how can I say? You're addicted to drive a manual car and then you fight an automatic car. You would be looking for the, for the, for the, for the, <laughs> I don't know if you understand me. No, I understand you saying, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so you have to you, the lady have to block her mind and then follow the man or follow what she's feeling. If she if she doesn't have that capacity to block her thoughts, close your eyes. Close your eyes because on that time that you close your eyes, they the only thing that you have that the, the, the followers have is to rely on what they are thinking, is to trust the partner on what he wants to do, because that's all that they need. You know, if, if you are, if, for example, if you are a good leader and you find a girl that's a beginner, if you are a strong, strong, strong driver or a strong leader, the lady won't fail on nothing. They might process what you want a few seconds uh, uh, later, but they will go there where, where you want to go. So, for block, first step is to block your mind. And if you don't know how to block your mind, close your eyes. And if you think, if you feel, if the ladies or if the followers feel like, uh, the the lead is not good at all. They can look at the frame, at the man's frame. That will also lead her to something. You see. So that's our. The, these are the three tips that I have for them. Okay, I understand that, man. I understand that. Let me. Uh, you spoke on this earlier, man. You said your first tip for the leads. Yeah, was um, you know, listening to the music, you know, musicality, man. So let me ask you this, man. Um, you know, a two-part question for you. First part being one, yeah. how do you define musicality? You know, what is musicality? And then the second part, um, yeah. you know, how does one improve their musicality? Musicality. Um, you know, by listening to music more often, you gain musicality. I'm not talking about listening to one music, but being able to listen to, to music more often or different types of music, you gain musicality. For example, um, it's something that annoys me a bit. When you see a samba music, and then you find guys dancing urban keys on samba. For me, that is annoying. It's annoying because though that's not what the music is asking for. You see, the music is asking for that time of samba. That ta 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 ta, and you do it something like ta ta ta. That's not. You see, so listening to different types of music leads you to musicality. And um, the other thing, people should start, if, if you really want to gain musicality, you can find lessons of musicality on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on, the, on the social media platforms, Instagram. I, I had the opportunity to have one, les one lesson with um, um, Rui Jesse Morasen, it was on the festival. I had the opportunity to have his lesson on musicality because I needed to learn. I, f I felt like I was already doing, but I was doing something that I don't know, you know? And if I knew, for me, it would be like way more easier to do the follow up on that. So you can, you can, you can, uh, my first advice is to try to try to, 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 to learn about musicality. If you don't want to learn, just listen more often to music because that also helps you get musicality. For example, um, 
you have a music music is for example urban, urban keys urban keys urban keys is a style of music that has like too many calm parts or too many stops and stuff and the music is like boom 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 then suddenly you have a pow. And then if you still like on that boom, 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 then you lost musicality. So if you get the boom, 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 and then you stop, you're inside of the music. People can come and say that damn, that's a choreography, that's not a social or that's not an improvisation or stuff. But you see what I'm trying to say. So listening, listening more often leads you to musicality. I, I understand that, man. I definitely understand that. Um, I think also it's just something that comes with time, time and practice. But I definitely understand yeah. that. I definitely do, man. Let me let me ask you this, yes. man. Um, you know, you've been dancing since you're eight years old. Uh, tell me this: what what are some lessons that you've learned from dancing that yeah. you're able to translate to your everyday life? everyday life first of all this is the first of it um it's that we don't we don't have to block our mind before we try because our mind is the most thing that makes us achieve or makes us lose so because i didn't quit on what i was not learning I was able to make it and I was able to bring it to a professional level. That because I kept in my mind that I can learn this, I can do this. So blocking our mind is not good. So we have to try hard. That's a thing. That's one of the things. The other thing is information is power. And if you're not able to look for information about whatever you want to learn or whatever you want to, to know, you won't be able to do exactly nothing. And before I started to teach or I started to dance professionally, I had to go, I had to learn. I had to look for information. I have to search for information. And then um, that's a thing, that's a thing. Uh, the other part is um, uh, um, it's not bad to start from the bottom, you know. Um, today we are beginners, but tomorrow we will be like professionals or advanced. So don't feel like bad or weird about starting from the bottom. It always have to start somewhere. Yeah, those are like the things, the three things that I kept in my mind. That, though I was a beginner a few years ago, but now um, people consider me as a tough leader, as a, a good dancer. Yeah, so yeah, man. I get you, man. I get you, big bro. Um, how long ago did you start teaching? Five years ago. Five years ago. Tell me, tell me about your your beginner stage in learning how to teach. What was that like for you? Damn, it was it was difficult a bit, but you know what happens on our community or our dancers community and all of the many other all of the other styles it's we have good dancers but not good teachers you can be a good dancer but also not be a good teacher so for me it was like different i had or i have the capacity to to teach that's the thing that i i I saw even when I was, I started teaching Kizomba in five years, but before that I was already teaching Afrobeat and stuff. So it's something that I gained and something that I was like talented of teaching because I'm, I'm able to, 
to go down to that beginner level, think as a beginner, and then try to transmit him on the easiest way. So that's a thing that most of us, most of the dancers don't have. They are good, very good dancers, but they don't have that ability to go down to a level to be able to teach someone something that you was able to also learn and then yeah so it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't very bad where i saw that i'm very good at teaching i had a very old lady like on she was on 60 60 something you know a lady that you can see that yeah she's like old she even shakes you know she even shakes that has that shaking thing but she had that power to learn she had that that motivation to learn kizomba and now you see her like sliding on the on the dance floors and uh, she was she was like because of her age some things are more difficult to learn she has like a, a late process of learning and I teached her how to dance and when I see her sliding on the floor on the floor as I I'm proud of myself because I was able to teach even on a difficult way so yeah that's awesome yeah. man. that's awesome that's really cool man that's really cool um yeah, that's real. let me I, I don't I got I think maybe two more questions for you man let me ask you this man this is kind of Hey, yeah. It's kind of not off topic, but you know, let me ask you this, man. Yeah. Um, talk to me about the the step in Kizomba. Can you talk to me about you know, I guess maybe the weight transfer? Talk to me about you know the basic step in Kizomba and and you know how does one improve their stepping? You know, their walking. How do, how does one improve that? Okay, how can we, how can we improve um, Kizomba stepping? Um, if there is one thing that is very important in Kizomba, it's to manage your balance and know where is your weight. You know, because if I have my weight on my left foot, I won't be able to do tricks with my. For example, in Kizomba, if I have my weight on the on the left foot, and because my partner is my mirror, she will also have her weight on her right foot, so on the same side. And if I know that my weight is on that side, it means I have my other foot released to do something on the time, inside of the time. Because, um, how can I say, if it's, there's something that can block us from doing very tricky steps and stuff, it's not knowing where our is, not uh, uh, um, how to transit the weight from another way, another foot to the other one, how to, how to manage that balance thing. That's a thing that people um, don't uh, don't don't have in mind, and they should. I remember a few weeks ago, I think um, two two weeks ago, I was in Durban, uh, South Africa. I went there to give some workshops, and I gave one workshop. I had one move, and with that one move, it was like a combo, a combination of different uh, 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 moves. That one move, I was able to do three, three different options of the same move by showing on this weight, I could do this. Where my weight, if, if my weight is here, I could do this. If it's here, I could do this. If it's here, I could do this. For example, you can walk normally, but you can also go to the front, but walking with rhythm. You can also walk to the front by working, by, by walking with 
without rhythm, you're also working. You're also walking. You see, so the thing is, no, no, where your weight is distributed on, and think before you move, because most of the times we don't move because we're like, what if, what if, what if and then. What if this? What if that? What if that? It's quite like that. Uh, it's quite like that. Practice. And I would say practice. Practice. It's more important. Yeah, okay. Now I understand. I definitely understand that, man. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me ask you. I, I want to ask you. Let me ask you. Yeah, let me ask you the last question, big boy. Last question for you, bro. Can you give me one tip, one piece okay, of advice okay. Let's go. that can make anyone a better dancer immediately. One tip that make any dancer. Um, practice, 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 and, and, um, uh, What's 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 what I want to say? Focus on what you want to do. Choose one, and then focus on that. Practice, and then you will improve. My focus, for example, what I use as as focus um, is dance, not kizomba, not Afrobeat, no dance. You know, by focusing on dancing, I was able to put one music and then dance that music. Put another one and then dance that music. Put, you know, it's to dance, it's, it's to practice, it's to focus on what you want to dance and then practice. And if you want to do it Kizomba, practice more often, listen to the music and then just move forward. That's the thing, practice, practice, practice is what's going to make you a perfect dancer. That seems like uh, like the obvious answer, but it, it rings so true. It's very true. In everything, actually, in, in, on everything, you have to practice now. Practice is what makes perfection. So if you practice, you will, you will be able to do whatever you want to do on the thing that you're focusing on. So yeah, practice is the thing. Now, I understand that, man. I understand that. I wanna um I wanna thank you so much, man, Claudia, you know, for taking time out here to talk to you, man. I really appreciate it. No, man, I'm the one who has to appreciate and I feel I feel also honored. I feel honored um for like being interviewed. And uh man, I, I don't have words, man. I don't have words. Uh, I'm just like feeling honored at this moment. Yeah, I feel like I'm on my prime time, <laughs> but I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm, I'm happy. I'm very happy. And I wish I had more opportunities to like uh, interact with uh, you guys and then even or maybe come to Guam. Um, I mean, that, that would be awesome, man. I would I would love for you to come to Guam and I would love the opportunity to come to Mozambique, man. That'd be super cool. Super cool. We will. We should. We should. We should. Um, we should arrange something. You know? <laughs> I think you, you. You would like to move to Mozambique, man. Hey, hey. I'm curious. How like. far? How far is uh, Mozambique from Angola? From Angola, um, by plane. I think you. By plane, I think you take. Uh, by plane, maybe, 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 four, maybe four hours, four, four, three hours, maybe. I've, I've, I've never been to Angola. I never went by plane and stuff, but I, I was like near there. Nairobi, it's a bit near from Angola. Um, maybe four, 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 two to four hours. Yeah. Two to four hours, maybe. Yeah, yeah but I would love, love to. I love, I would love the opportunity, you know, to come visit the motherland, man. I would love that, man. Let me, uh, let, let me ask you this real quick, man. Um, you know, how can people get in contact yes. with you? How can they reach out to you? 
How can we? Uh, how can people get in contact with you? How can they reach out to you? Oh, okay. Um, man, I'm a, I'm available on on social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and um, anything. Just DM me if you need like contact and stuff. I think people can have my my WhatsApp. Yeah. Uh, but um, I'm I'm available. I'm available in Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. What's uh? And, and so real quick, I'll, I'll put your. Insta- I'll put your Instagram in the in the description, but your Instagram mm-hmm. is what Claudio as the momento. How do you say it? How, how do you say it? Claudio Uj Momento. Uj do Momento. It's like it's like Momento. Momento. The meaning of Momento is like moment. You see, and when you say. Uj do momento in Portuguese. In English, you're saying like um, from the moment. It's like it's like you are the guy of the moment. So and I'm, I'm saying Claudio from the moment is the name of the crew that I belong now. We are like uh, Afro house dancers, and the name of the crew is Uj do momento. It's like of the moment. Yeah, we can say of the moment. So of the moment, we are saying like, you are the moment, you are, you are the moment at this time. Like when something is popping, what's popping is who's the moment, you see? So, yeah. Hey, yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect, big bro. Real quick, real quick, Claudio. Uh, before we close yes, this man. episode out, man, do you have any last words that you want to share? Anything you want to share with the people? before we finish up this episode? Um, the last thing that I'm, I'm going to share with you guys, um, believe on what you want to achieve. Uh, most of the times we have like things on life that block us or even like get us late on what we want to achieve. But if you believe on what you want to do, on what you, on what you, on what you want to achieve, you will get there or even further. Because for me, I didn't imagine that I was going to be a professional dancer, an artist. I didn't imagine that I was going to be like interviewed from someone from Google. So I, I didn't even want it. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, uh, because I love dance, I was not willing to take it professionally. I was like, I'm just going to dance because I love to dance. But because I love to dance, that made me like get on very other stages. So believe in what you want to do, um, try hard also try hard first before quitting or giving up on what you believe so believe also and have a strong mind that's all I have to say and I thank you all man for this I thank you bro yeah, yeah, that's perfect man I think I think that is the perfect way to end this episode of the two and three podcast I want to thank you so much Mr. Claudio for taking time out today man thank you so much big bro no, thank you, man. I'm the one who has to thank, though. I'm honored. I feel honored. I feel honored. For real. Hey, no doubt, no doubt, man. Thank you so much, Claudio, man. Um, Thank you, man. That'll do it. Thank you, bro. <laughs> thank you, bro. And I wish, I wish we would, like, interact more often. Okay. Um, sometimes I'm, sometimes I'm, I'm a bit unavailable because of, of work and stuff. I am. I've, I've like I've been having hectic days working shows so I, I, um few man and uh, yeah bro uh, we should busy. arrange something in order for us to to know Mozambique and also to know Gwen yeah. yeah bro I'm with it big bro I'm with it big bro yeah we'll, we'll collaborate man I'm with it man thank you so much Claudio oh oh 
All right, big bro. I think Thank you, man. Thank All you. right, big bro. All right, Claudio. Thank you, oh, shit. All right, big